Good morning or afternoon, everybody. It's great to be teaching you today. I'm super excited. We've got an action-packed day for today. We really do. It's going to be a great day. It's kind of a long day, but I'll try to make tomorrow shorter as a result. All right. Uh, first thing that you're going to do is go ahead and head over into Google Classroom. All right. That's the first thing. If you're probably already there, that's how you probably found this video. Head over to Classwork. You'll see um, I'm changing it up. I'm putting the date up here so that you could find the dates a little bit easier. All right, um, and as you can see it, we've got the turn in document, open that one up first. We've got the Google Doc here, and that's gonna be where you're gonna be doing all your work for today. I have it all kind of set up nice and neatly right here so that you have uh, every single thing to do throughout the entire day. I even added links to things, so you don't always have to have the presentation open the entire time. You could click the link and it might open the presentation for you. Now that we've started out with that, let's start out with the question of the day. So first thing you're going to do is fill out the question of the day, which is, how are you staying active? All right. How are you staying active? All right. Looks like two people have already turned it in. Nice job. I'm going to go over and head over to my student account and do the same thing. So if I go in there, um, I can go and go to classwork and I can see that what is going on in this picture. I can already view the question. Oh, that's not the one I need to go to. I need to go to how are you staying active? All right, I can view the question. I can say, all right, um, I watch, uh, me and my wife have been doing YouTube dance videos. All right, it's actually pretty fun. I know you might be like, Mr. Lieberman, that's kind of, you know, a little girly. I'm like, no, nah, they're fun. They're a good time. I really enjoy the YouTube dance videos. It keeps me active and I feel great afterwards. Just type in 15 minute dance workout and you'll find some good stuff. All right, so I'm gonna hit turn in. Once I do that, um, I can go ahead and see other people's answers, all right? Uh, all right, so your answer, your answer, see classmates' answers. And what you need to do is you need to reply to somebody else. I paint and watch Netflix. Nice, I wanna start painting too. Once you do that, in your document, you're gonna write down the person's name that you're responding to. Why am I making you do this? There's a lot of people who aren't responding to each other's things. Look, somebody already responded to mine. Tina said, good one, right? Um, so respond to people, it's fun. It makes things more interesting, all right? And you're kind of required to now, all right? The do now is one of the do nows that we've done a lot before, all right? Which is, what's going on in this picture? Try to figure it out. What's going on in this picture? And what makes you say that? AWW points if you come up with another reason and what makes you say that. Then what you're gonna do is head over into Google Classroom and then you can go ahead and uh, head over to the other question. What is going on in that picture? You can view that question. And I'm thinking it's a breakdance battle and it's the little kid's turn, all right? So I'm gonna write breakdance battle, little kid's turn. Why? Because they are in a circle and the kid looks like she's dancing. All right, so once I hit turn in, I can then see classmates' answers and I could say, oh, all right, Tina said that. I think that the little girl is getting interviewed. Cool, that's good thinking, Tina. I like that. All right, so I'm just responding. Could be, I'm gonna say, Tina, capital T. All right, cool. Um, and then I'm gonna say who I responded to, which is Tina. Then we're gonna go on and um, just a little heads up in case you wanted to know what yesterday's actual uh, picture was. It's a girl. She's carrying a painting of Jesus Christ that was left after last month's 8.8 .8 magnitude earthquake in Constitución, Chile. South of Santiago, Chile is where my dad's from. Overall, the damage estimates are run as high as $30 billion. Officials have said that with about five, 500,000 homes destroyed and serious damage done to bridges, roads, ports, and public transportation stations. That's pretty bad. All right, but that's what the image was. Cool? Let's watch a video. Go ahead and uh, click the link to the video. It's, all, it's a brain pop on Mali. Right, uh, a lot of people call it Molly, but I have a friend from Africa and he was like, No, I don't even know what you're talking about. Are you talking about Molly? I'm like, Yeah, 
So we should call it Mali, not Molly. But anyways, go ahead and watch the video. It's a good one. There's a lot of questions in this, as you can see. Answer all the questions and then um, replay this video so, tell, so I can tell you what to do next with the timeline. Go. Alrighty, everybody. Welcome back. It's good. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that video. I hope you answered all the questions. Let's go on to the next thing, which is the timeline. All right. For this timeline, it's easier if you hit present and you go through it this way because it goes in order. And the big question we're trying to figure out is which events in Europe or Asia directly affected Africa's growth. So let's go over some events, right? In the year 200 to 300, we see the kingdom of Ghana was established. And remember, we're in CE, all right? At the same, um, about 50 years later-ish, we see that Ghana starts smelting iron, right? Why is that a big deal? It's because iron is pretty strong. It's one of the strongest materials, one of them. Um, and it could be used for uh, gardening, for uh, like agriculture stuff. It could also be used as weapons, all right? So that's a big deal for them. In Europe around the same time, this is when the Han Dynasty fell. So there's some chaos and conflict going on in China. All right, and in 476, as you recall, Western Rome fell. And remember, Rome turned into a bunch of little kingdoms kind of afterwards, all right? And then the other thing that's going on is in 610, Muhammad becomes a prophet. Remember, we see the nation or the religion of Islam really grow after that point, all right? In 830, this is when we consider the height of Ghana. Ghana is like at their golden age sort of deal, but... Uh, and we see in 850, Islam starts to come in Ghana, alrighty? So we start to see that this, uh, uh, after Muhammad, we see Islam actually actually makes it to Ghana. In 1095 to the 1200s, we have the Crusades, and then in 1192, we have the Samurai era, and that's also um, around the time when Ghana fell and Mali really starts to become a big empire. And then we see in 1312, Mansa Musa is out there. So now the big question for you all is, which event in Europe and Asia do you think directly affected Africa's growth and why? What's the big reason? And I want you to think, what's the connection to Mansa Musa too? What you're going to do is you're going to answer that question here under timeline. Which events do you think in Europe affected uh, Africa's growth and then why do you think that? And then you're going to copy this answer. You're going to go back into Google Classroom and you're going to answer the question here. All right. And oh, I'm in the teacher page. If I go to the student page, sorry. You're going to answer the question here. View question and you can answer the question. All right. After you answer the question, you're going to comment on somebody else's answer and you're going to write down who did you respond to. Cool. And then we're going to do some reading and taking notes. All right. So post your answer in the Google Classroom if you haven't. All right. All right. We're going to do some reading and taking notes. We're going to answer questions to see if our notes are good enough. And then I'm, uh, I'm going to try to give you any extra time on the magazine project, but we're going to do this twice. Okay. So round one, Molly notes, P1, all right? You're going to find the reading right here, all right? Um, it's also in your document here. You're going to open up the reading. You're going to read and take notes on the first page, all right? You're reading all these titles, essentially, just the first page, all right? Take good notes, all right? You're going to take notes here. Remember, if you need to make a bullet point, you can hit the dash button and then a space bar. That turns it into a bullet. You can hit enter now and that'll keep it going, the bullets going. The other thing uh, that you can do here is if you need to move the bullet point forward, you can hit the tab button and that'll move the bullet point forward. If you need to move it back, you're gonna hold shift and then hit tab, alrighty? I left the instructions for that right here, all right? Make sure you're taking notes in bullet points and not a paragraph, okay? After that, I'm gonna show you some questions. And I want to see, can you answer these questions with just your notes? All right. So don't look at the questions yet. Try to take good notes up here and then see if you can answer the questions with just your notes. And then you're going to do it one more round. All righty. One more round. All right. So that's P1. Then you'll do part two, read and take notes down here and then answer the questions. Then there's after that, there's just one quick Molly inference. It's the last thing for today. 
All right. So the last thing for today is you're going to uh, answer this question. What might have been another reason for Mansa Musa's pilgrimage other than religion? All right. And what makes you think that? After that, you're going to post your answer to that question also in Google Classroom right over here. Respond to somebody else and then say who you responded to. That's the last thing for today. I know today's a little bit more work than usual, a little bit more reading and taking notes, but tomorrow will be less reading and taking notes as a result. When you're finished with that, all right, don't forget your outline is due tomorrow, all righty? There's a document in Google Classroom to help you with it, but remember the outline, the key thing to think about is what is going to go on in each paragraph. In Google Classroom, I've already got the outline doc there. It's just under the History Magazine project. So you can see I've got the uh, both an outline example here. So if I want to see an example of a student named Nicole last year, I can see an example of her outline. And here's where I'm going to actually do my outline. All right. In the outline, the key things to do is, did you finish all your research? If not, do you need to do more research? It's okay. A lot of times while we're writing, we'll need more information. That's all right. That's normal. Then you're going to make sure you, you can answer all these questions. It's really important. Can you answer all these questions? And this is a sample outline, all right? So it would start off with your intro paragraph, which is what is it? How, why do people use it? Your body paragraph, who developed it and how was it developed and what problem did it try to solve? And then you could do the evolution of it over time or how it's made. And then you can do a conclusion. But your topic might be different. All right, it might be different. So say, so write your topic here and then say what's going to go in each paragraph. If this is really hard and confusing and you're not sure what might go on, on in each paragraph, use this sample and feel free to email me, all right? If you need any help, I'm on my computer until about 4:35 p.m. every day. All right? Other than that, I'm hopefully going to be finishing all of the grading today. I'm pretty close to done. And um have a great day. Let me know how things are going and feel free to email me about any questions or problems that you might have, all right? Take care, everybody. Keep surviving out there, and I'll see you all tomorrow.